Hi, my name is Caden. I own a mowing company and I mow about 45 lawns right now. Uh, this is my third year and I could pretty consistently hit $140 an hour on all my routes mowing 45 lawns. So I'm going to talk about how I did that and some tips and tricks for being very efficient and very profitable when it comes to mowing service. It's very easy to make very thin margins when it comes to mowing. So here's how I've gotten my margins pretty dang good. So when we're talking about mowing service, what you're doing is selling time. Um, so your labor cost is the biggest thing that's going to affect your profit. So it's basically it comes down to your hourly rate. How quickly can you do the job slash how much can you charge? Okay. So the two levers for that, well, there's three. One would be efficiency on your actual providing the service. Are you efficient with how you mow a lawn, right? How you actually deliver the service, is that efficient? I'm gonna assume you're already very efficient with that. So you have to assume that and with all of this that I'm about to say, we're assuming that you're basically maxed out on your efficiency as far as on the job time. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk about that metric. For now, we can, I mean, that does matter and I, that has, I've gotten far more efficient with how I actually perform the service, but most business owners, um, if you're the owner or the operator, like you know how to do that really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and blaze right past that. If you're interested in that, whatever, I'll make a video. But anyway, so I'm gonna assume that you're already delivering the service extremely efficiently. If that's the case, then we have two things that we can do to improve our hourly rate in a major way. Number one is gonna be your price. So it's gonna be just charging more money for the same thing. And number two is gonna be route density. Both are extremely important, both vastly affect your hourly rate. So I'm gonna talk about each, how do you improve them and why they actually matter so much. So on these next couple slides, I'm just gonna break down numbers, just simple numbers. How does price affect it and how does route density affect your actual hourly rate and also profit, take home pay, all that stuff. So let's dive in. <clears throat> on this one, first example is gonna be price, okay? so. As you can see on the left here, I'm gonna assume you're doing 10 jobs. I wrote out five, but just times everything by two to get your, you know, I'm assuming you do about 10 jobs a day. Um, if you're really efficient, you know, especially with jobs taking half an hour, you can definitely do more than that, but whatever. Let's just say you got these jobs for simplicity's sake, they take you half an hour. You're gonna have about 10 minute drive, 20 minute drive, five minute drive, 10 minute drive. Just kinda, I just did kinda standard drive time that's going to be pretty spread out okay so on this route everything's spread out um and yeah 10 jobs 35 each i'm gonna assume you do them all a half an hour so on the left side here 35 bucks you're going to be making 350 dollars a day gross gross means total you know before you take out your expenses and stuff like that uh six and a half hours it's going to take you six and a half hours to do those 10 jobs uh not including like lunch and stuff like that it's just drive time and working so you're going to be making 53 an hour if you did 10 jobs. So that's not very good at all. 53 an hour is not very good because you got to take out a, a chunk of that for all your expenses and everything. You can't really build a business off of that. Okay. So that's going to be an issue. If you just increase your price by $10, all of a sudden you go from 53 an hour to 69 per hour. I and mean, you can check the math and you go from 350 bucks a day to 450 bucks a day. So, you didn't change anything, but all of a sudden you're profiting an extra $10 every single job simply from raising your price. Here's the crazy thing about raising prices. Okay, see this little PS worst case? Let's say you lose 20% due to the price increase. Well, now all of a sudden you're doing eight jobs for $360 and it's taking you 5.2 hours. So you're making a better hourly rate. You're doing less work and $10 more. See from, the, from example A to example B, on the left side, you're making 350 bucks. It takes you six and a half hour. You raise your price, you lose 20%, and you're working an hour less and making $10 more. So you're working less and making more money simply by raising the price. So that is why pricing is one of the best levers when it comes to profit for mowing service. So that's the example. Raise it by 10 bucks and boom, okay? Raising prices is a phenomenal lever to pull when it comes to profit in mowing. Okay, the second, uh, this isn't really a lever you can pull, but a second uh, thing to try to do when it comes to maximizing profit is gonna be route density. So here's an example. 
On the left side, it's the same example A, 350 bucks a day, 66 and a half hours. That's a pretty spread out route, okay? On the right side is gonna be a denser route. You have five minute, one minute drives. Zero minute would be if you have two houses right next to each other, right? You don't even have to drive. That's gonna improve your hourly rate uh, without you having to charge more because you're spending, you're wasting less time driving, let alone you're wasting less gas. But anyways, so we can see here you go from $53 an hour to $66 an hour if you simply just have properties closer to each other. So that's another one. Closer properties, boom, you get a better hourly rate. P.S. No worst case because nobody's going to leave you if you get their neighbor. In fact, they're actually going to have you have more trust in you if you're mowing your neighbors because they just think social proof, you know, if the neighbor likes you, then you're good. So that's why route density is super important, um, especially if you get a bunch of those zero minute drives. Like if you get four yards in a row, dude, it's crazy. The amount of uh, more efficient you are is, is wild. So those are a couple examples. Here is a, a really good one. This is a case study. Okay, this is Monday's route. So this was a few days ago. I literally just did this. I recorded all these times and everything. Uh, I use Yardbook, so I just, just hit clock in and clock out. Did all the times. I did uh, like 14 jobs on Monday, but I just made it easy and I just did 10. Also, because the graphics were kind of hard to do 14, so I just did 10. But these are real jobs. These are real drive times. These are real clock in and clock out. So you can see here, this is both, I'm pricing a lot, I am charging a lot, and I have a relatively dense route. I could do way better. If we had, you could have 10 jobs on us. Like, anyways, you can make it even better than this, and you can even probably charge more, but this is somewhere, this is pretty good as far as pricing and route density. So this is Monday's route. You can see here, I made 555 bucks. That day I actually made more because I did four more jobs, but this is just with those 10 jobs. Took me 4.12 hours to do these. This is not factoring in lunch or stopping for uh, gas or like any of that. This is just how much time did it take me on the job plus the drive time. So it ended up taking more time than that for me to drive to the shop to get my trailer and all that stuff. But this is 555 bucks, 4.12 hours. That's $134 an hour. Um, yeah, that's that PS down there where I talked about that. So. Spent 3.44 hours working and 0.68 hours driving. So right there, you can see um, that is good money. 555 bucks for 4.2 hours. Not bad at all. 134 bucks an hour. That is something you could build a business off of. That is something that gives you margin to actually hire employees. Um, and it's needed if you're going to try to scale and actually make profit with mowing. Now, I haven't done much scaling yet. Um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So how did I do that? Well, it took a few years, um, so it takes time. This next slide is going to, if I can do it. Here we go. How? How do we do this? Okay. Assuming you already have clients. This is all assuming you already have clients and you're already maximum efficient on the job. Okay. I'm going to talk about why that's assumed in a minute. So how do we raise prices? Well, it's quick and easy. It's immediate profit. It's most natural in the spring. How do you do it? You actually just simply call the client and let them know. You don't even need a reason. Hey, Joe, I'm just calling to let you know, unfortunately, I'm going to have to raise your price by $10. Um, so yeah, going forward, the new price is going to be $10. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Dude, simple, easy. You literally don't even need a reason. If you want to say, oh, uh, it's because of inflation or it's because of, you know, I'm having to pay my guys more or it's because of whatever, you could say a random reason, but you literally don't even need a reason. This is America. You can raise your prices. <laughs> so you simply call them, let them know you're raising it is definitely most natural in the spring, okay? So that's when I've had the biggest price jumps is in the spring when I'm calling back my clients, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a few weeks before mowing starts and I'm just checking in, hey, you know, how, how did the winter go? I'm just checking in to make sure you still wanna be put on the mowing schedule, yes, okay. Going forward, the new price is gonna be this uh, for this year. Uh, and I'm also making these little changes if you're making any changes, whatever. Your mowing day is going to be Wednesday, stuff like that. Very natural to raise your prices in the spring, but you can do it at any time. And it is something that you should be doing, raising your prices. Totally. The second thing, route density, how do you do it? Well, it's much harder. It takes time and marketing. Okay, so don't if, don't expect to have a crazy dense route when you first start. Um, and the best practices for getting route density is going to be decals on the truck. You want the neighbors seeing you and knowing who you are, uh, knowing how to get a hold of you. Small yard signs. Uh, so I'm talking about those little ones that you see like that turf application companies put out there, those little tiny ones. 
Uh, I do those for mowing, they work great. Put them on a, whenever you have a sidewalk, throw them in there. Um, door hangers, they call them five arounds, where you do the two houses beside the property you're working on and then the three across the street, that's called a five around, where you just throw door hangers on all those. And then door knocking, knock on the neighbor's doors and say, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name's Caden, I own this mowing company, I'm working on a house beside. I was just curious if you'd be interested in uh, me providing you a price for mowing service. Uh, if so, it's, you know, whatever, it's gonna be this. Um, so yeah, that's pretty simple. Okay, so fast growth is gonna be lowing pr lower prices and you're gonna get customers quicker and it's gonna be easy easier to get denser routes. Okay, so if you lower your prices, you're gonna grow faster, you're gonna get faster customers and it's gonna be easier to get denser routes. Slow growth is gonna be a higher profit. With more profit, you could spend more on marketing so you could definitely still grow profitably. It's just gonna be a little slower and it's gonna be harder to get super dense routes. So that's why when I start out, I'm definitely doing a bit of a price gouge. I'm gonna be coming in at a lower price, gonna serve them for a year at that lower price, and then I'm gonna be raising prices in the spring is kind of my general um, approach when it comes to pricing. Okay, so here's why efficiency matters so much when it comes to business. This is crazy, all right? I'm diving into this. These are real numbers of my business, okay? I'm not some huge business owner. I own a small mowing company. Um, so yeah, nothing, this is nothing crazy. I'm not like some giant uh, company or anything, but I've learned a lot from doing this for three years. So that's why I'm doing this, you know, YouTube, I'm not out here claiming I own some kind of million dollar company or anything. This is a small business, um, but I've learned a lot. But this is why efficiency matters so much. So in 2023, last year, I was doing every service ever. I was pro pro like providing every service to every uh, client. I was doing all kinds of hedge trimming and like just so much stuff, hedge trimming, pulling weeds, uh, doing a bunch of weed, uh, leaf cleanups, doing landscape projects, things of like that. And um, so we would get a bunch of clients. I also had staff. I had like two people helping me out all the time. And the crazy thing is that was only my second year. I was way, way cheap. I was underpriced on everything. I was paying these guys way too much money. I was making very, very, very little profit and not even that much top line either. Um, just because I wanted to have like employees and like go through all that and try to be cool and do all that stuff. So it was a big mistake to have employees. It was I was doing it. I was I started to scale an inefficient business. We were not making profit. I was not making profit, and I was not efficient when it came to any of the services I provided and so that I just tried to add on more services when I wasn't even efficient with the first one. So I wasn't even efficient with mowing. Our mowing was taking forever. We'd have two people on a job and take an hour for one one mow when now I can do that same yard in like 30 minutes alone. So the point is efficiency is extremely important when it comes to setting yourself up to making an actual profit, which is why we're doing the business in the first place, hopefully. <laughs> Crazy part, 2024 was completely solo. I was alone, working alone. 2023, there was three of us. Okay, so that's like all your profits gone. Okay, first of all. Here is the craziest thing. 2023, I worked with 312 customers. 312. Okay, so that includes all of the landscape jobs, all of the stuff that people were calling me for that wasn't mowing. 2024, I cut all of that out. I went to just me and I was served uh, 60 customers. Okay, right now I have 45. But 60 were the, from the course of the year I've served 60. That is wild. Here's the actual screenshot from the processor right here um, at the bottom right. So we're down 80%. That's a ridiculous amount of work that just got completely cut out. Serving 300 customers is ridiculous. The amount of phone calls I was taking, the amount of managing I was doing when I was doing less in top line revenue. Like what the heck? Okay. If you are not doing 15,000 a month, you shouldn't have employees. Okay. So anyways, don't make the same mistakes I did. Um, yeah. The other mistake I'd made, this was in the first year, 2022 would be worrying about hourly rate because I would watch these videos of people saying, here's how you be profit. Here's how you be profitable when it comes to mowing. You gotta get your hourly rate to this and you gotta be making 200 an hour and you gotta have four houses in a row and you gotta do them all in 15 minutes and all this stuff. 
when you're first starting out, do not worry about hourly rate at all. You're inefficient and your service is terrible. Okay, both. So if you're inefficient and your service is terrible, that means you're providing very little, at least a lot less value to the client, and then you're gonna to try to charge them like double or triple in order to get your hourly rate there. Not a good strategy for growing the company. Okay, so you're inefficient and your service is terrible. So focus on the service. When you're first starting, focus on knowing what to look for, knowing how to actually make a client very happy with the service. And you are going to do it very inefficiently. You're not gonna have a good hourly rate when you start because you're gonna have to be cheaper probably and you're gonna be bad at it. You're just not gonna be efficient. It takes you a little bit to get like really efficient because you don't even know what to look for. Like if you're just used to mowing your own lawn and then you go work for five clients, well each client is a little bit different with how they like it. You might mow your own lawn a little bit different. So you have to learn how to actually keep a client happy, let alone how to be efficient. So you start with the service, then get efficient. Learn from my mistakes, okay, my mistake was trying to focus on getting an hourly rate because I wanted to make sure that this was actually a viable way to make money in the future, which is a good thing to focus on. However, I just was so focused on my hourly rate when I first started that it, the service was not nearly as good as it should have been. And it took me a lot longer to learn how to provide actually really, really good service. So when you're starting, just focus on purely how happy is the client and make them as happy as you possibly can. And then from there you can work on efficiency. Okay. Do not worry about efficiency when you're first starting. It will be a recipe for disaster. That's how you make the max profit. Maybe I'll do another video or something on how to be efficient with the actual service delivery, actually mowing a lawn. Um, that's a whole nother thing, but that's easier to learn. These are just the business concepts. So hopefully that was helpful. If so, great. Thanks for all the subscribers. Definitely wasn't expecting this many so quickly. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, let me know what what videos you want me to make and I'll make them. So see you later.